Hi folks, today we're going to talk about dovetail work holding for your five axis machining center. We're gonna show you our CAD and CAM workflows, including how we design and machine the dovetail into your stock material. We're gonna talk about some of the advantages. We're gonna make some test cuts out on the machine, and then we're gonna look at some fixturing examples that hopefully can inspire you to think about ways that you can improve your CNC machining workflows. Dovetailing gives you a positive mechanical lock as the dovetail vise interfaces and locks in with your stock. Our dovetail system also includes a locating pin so that if we're using our zero point system, we don't have to probe in our part. We know that each part is going to be accurately located in that X or Y axis. The second thing it does is provides additional rigidity and stability to the work holding setup. The third thing it does is it is really cool. It's a poke yoke thing. It's a Japanese term for avoiding mistakes. And it does this by preventing you from putting the stock in the wrong way. If you're just doing a one-off part or you're doing a bunch of parts that have different shapes and sizes, you may wanna stick with your traditional self-centering vise. But what we really like about the zero point system is that we can swap those in and out really quickly. Dovetail vices are less expensive than a traditional vise where this is Multiplied is if you're moving into automation. Let's say you have a robot, you may be purchasing five or 10 or 50 vices and the cost savings between a dovetail and a vice really add up. And speaking of automation, robots in particular are generally limited in how much they can lift. A dovetail vice weighs a fraction of what a self-centering vice weighs. Even if you're just loading parts by hand, the reduced weight of a dovetail is a welcome to change compared to a large vise. One of the last major benefits is the smaller footprint and size of a dovetail vise relative to the raw material and the finished part. This lets you more easily gain access to cut on the sides of the part as well as potentially doing some work on that sixth side, that underneath side that can help you gain better access, better clearance, better chip evacuation and get that part done potentially in one operation. The best way to use a dovetail system is build out your template. We've got this one available to download over on the NYC CNC website. What this lets you do is make use of integrated CAD CAM as well as user parameters. Under Fusion 360, change parameters. I use this all the time, so I clicked on the three dots and pinned it to my toolbar. This lets us update our stock dimensions on the fly to adjust it to our part dimensions. What's really cool is doing that didn't just update the stock, it also gives us ready to run CAM, whether we're machining an aluminum version or steel version of our raw material. If you're machining aluminum, our template includes a roughing operation that first roughs out the material prior to cutting the dovetail. If you're really trying to go fast, you can cut the dovetail without having roughed it out, but it will usually raise a burr on this edge. So we use a 2D contour to come through and deck off that face and cut our dovetail. And then we come back with the same end mill to give ourselves a small clearance flat on our dovetail. And then to machine the locating stop pin. If we're using steel or any harder material, you first wanna rough out the majority of the material, machine our dovetail. While we've got that tool in there, we can also cut that flat. And finally, the locating pin. So let's show how we set up a dovetail operation for a part. This Johnny 5 model literally has thousands of parts in it. I'm gonna zoom in. I wanna tackle this finger right here. So if I right click, find in browser, it expands the design tree and gives me that component right there. Right click, export. And if I uncheck save to my computer, I can save it directly to my Johnny 5 project and we'll call it dovetail demo finger. That part is now in my Fusion project. I'm gonna activate my part placeholder component, right click on my dovetail demo finger file and insert into current design. Let's move that part into rough position. 
I'm going to want to leave some excess stock below it so that we can try to take advantage of one of the things with dovetail work holding, which is finishing this part in one setup by giving us access to that sixth side, that underneath side of the part. So I'll click OK, and we can now resize our stock to better match it. And this is a mix of getting the stock close to the part size, but also recognizing what stock you have on hand. I'm gonna scoot our part up just to give us even more clearance. So rather than trying to click and hold to select the correct object, just right click on the part over here in your design tree, move copy, move it up just so it's below the top of our stock. All I want is enough raw material on the top to clean off and face that part and capture position. So now we're ready to start programming our part. The great thing about this workflow is we're starting with a Fusion 360 master setup file that has our work holding in it. It's got our parametric stock. It's got the cam to create the stock. And you can populate this part setup with pre-programmed toolpaths. This lets you save tools and recipes and settings within the actual Fusion file, which can be really helpful because so much time is spent clicking on setting the tool orientation to have the toolpath come in from different angles. This method can help reduce all of that work. We're still working on that, so stick around. We'll click that subscribe button. More to come as we refine those workflows and share that file with you guys. If your vise has dovetail jaws, you can leverage some of the benefits of dovetails here as well. Number one, it will let you hold a piece of material that's larger than your vise. And number two, when that material overhangs the vise, it actually gives you much better access to it. Like you can see here in this video from Dr. Phil over at MJK Performance. One of the best ways I find to get the creative juices flowing when you're trying to figure out how to machine a part or how to fixture it is look at examples. First off is this motorcycle triple tree. So we've got two major benefits of having a dovetail here. Number one is it gives us clearance to access the underside, that sixth side of our part, and do as much work in op one as we can. This can be really helpful for both tolerances as well as surface finishes, but also giving us good geometry when we go to flip the part and do an op two or deck off. The other benefit here is that blue pyramid falls away from our dovetail, which gives us extra clearance to use the shortest gauge length or shortest stick out tool possible to increase rigidity and again, surface finishes and tolerance. Similar part from Brody McBrick, great example of a five axis part where most of it's probably just three plus two, but having that relatively small dovetail helps us get as much done in op one as possible. Dovetail vices are also really easy to add or design onto your own in-house made fixtures like you see here. Next up from Auto Engineer is a part listed as a Formula Student pedal arm. Looks like a Haas Trunnion with an incredibly long stick out, but this is where dovetail can be really impressive is the size of the part that you can have relative to the work holding. Rev Grips had a video showing a pretty cool setup. On the left, they've got the ability to run a single or dual station vise, so either op zero or a final op on the part, and they're running a probing cycle here to confirm tolerance. But for a part like this, I don't want a vise that's any bigger than it has to be. So the relatively small dovetail is going to give us access to the left, the right, the front, and the back of that part. With five axis, you really want a machine that's sized for the part. So big machines for big parts, small five axis machines to give you access to get into smaller parts. This part here from Aspect CNC is pretty small for a UMC 750, but you can see they've got what appears to be two different risers that end up with a dovetail at the very top that give access to all six sides of this part. When you've got a really small tool like this, you need to use as short a gauge length and stick out as possible. Having a dovetail vise that's about the same size as our part is the trick. And here's a different one. This is from SS CAD CAM. It doesn't look like a dovetail part, but it actually is two dovetail bases stacked next to each other on a custom riser holding 16 parts. So the beauty of having dovetail here is again, less expensive than the equivalent vise. They're narrower and wide, which gives him better access to the front and backside edge of this part. And you can have two of these be loading and offloading one while the other runs. And you can see that hole there on the left is probably used to set his XYZ coordinate system. So the rest of these photos are all going to be Christmas trees, which you'll see is a pretty common thing and speaks to the benefit of using dovetails. Starting off with the Dr. Phil experience, relatively small dovetail, 
on a Christmas tree. We've got four parts on here, ironically held in a vise. So we're gonna check all these boxes. Good part access, relatively inexpensive, lends itself to automation. This time he's got more of a pyramid than a Christmas tree. Three of these bike pedals, pretty cool to see how he gets access to all the sides by actually running a tool kind of between or through two of the other parts. Weight is a real issue. Aluminum pyramids with a lightweight dovetail is the only way to make this work on an LR Mate 200 that can only lift somewhere between 10 and 20 pounds. This is more of a traditional tombstone setup like you would see on a horizontal fourth axis machine, but works totally fine on a five axis. They've got it on a quick change base so they can swap out this whole tombstone while another one is running. And using the dovetail gives us the part density and access to all the sides we need. Automation these days in CNC machines is absolutely amazing. And if you head to a shop that is using robots or using AROA systems, you're likely going to see some integration of dovetails. Here we have dovetail clamps, Christmas tree clamps, vices all intermixed within a system. But for me as the bootstrapper, when I think about tooling one of these things up, it's the cost element that can really help when you're trying to get going on automation. Here's a double layered Christmas tree from Herco, France. There would be no way to do this, to hold eight parts on a tapered Christmas tree with any sort of a traditional vise. The dovetail here is the way to go to get that part density and runtime out of a single fixture. Here's another dovetail Christmas tree system. Something to keep in mind is you can move the dovetails between fixtures. If you're trying to minimize the amount of work holding inventory you have on hand or just bootstrap, you could take the dovetails off a fixture like this and move them over onto say a fixture like this. Here's another dovetail tombstone. This time actually is on a fourth axis. So high part density, easy ability to pull this whole tombstone off and swap it with the second one. Probably the smallest parts we'll show off today in a high part density, 12 parts per Christmas tree. On a lot of the auto modern automation systems, you're gonna have 10, if not 20 or 30 pallets. So you can very quickly and easily get to hundreds of parts in a single setup. So this is how you make money. This is how your machine runs at night and over the weekends unattended. If you're looking at multi-part density dovetail bases, take a look at the A or B axis tilt travel of your machine tool. It's common to have 110 degree max tilt. Two common examples, the UMC 750 that we've got, as well as a machine like the DMU 50. Using a dovetail base that has a 20 degree angle will allow you to rotate your A or B axis over to that max 110 degrees and have a tool come in normal to that fifth face. A little bit of a different design, perfect fit for this profile of a part where you've got a center post riser that's holding the dovetails just at the right angle. That's gonna give you access to each part as needed. And again, we're getting a four part density out of a single fixture. Two more Christmas trees, but a little bit flatter where you're able to hold either four parts in this example of medical bone plates, or finally holding three parts on this pyramid. Dovetail work holding has its origins in machining hardened steel, where the positive mechanical lock of the dovetail offers superior reliability compared to smooth or even serrated vice jaws. But since then, dovetail work holding has really moved across all material spectrums. So if you are integrating this, the one thing you have to do is put a dovetail into your part. We've seen shops do this three different ways. Number one is what we already showed, you making the dovetails yourself. Oftentimes this is done on a smaller end or a lower cost machine that's dedicated to making these dovetails. A drill mill center would be an example. The second way is you can purchase dovetail extrusion from a material supplier where they're going to build an extrusion die for you and include that dovetail in it. If you want to use the polka yoke slot, you'll still need to machine that. The third way, which is pretty intriguing, is companies like TCI Metals. They offer machine ready blanks where you can purchase dovetails and have them shipped to you ready to drop into your machine. Hope you folks learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.